good morning and welcome. I am your moderator and I will be moderating the paper, plastics, uh, steel, glass, and aluminum session. And just to, to note, this morning all of our panelists have done a phenomenal job of preparing some information for you and so that we have the opportunity to hear all of that, we will be holding the questions until the end. Thus, if you have a question, please write it down and we will circle back to it or you'll have an opportunity to touch base with them during the networking lunch. And with that, our first panelist is Bill Moore. Bill is the president of Moore & Associates, Inc. and he will be sharing information with us today on the paper markets. Please join me in welcoming Bill Moore. Well, thanks, uh, thanks to the Floridians and uh, uh, the sponsors and, uh, and, and to Swix for recruiting some uh, top-notch speakers as they, they can. You're, uh, it's an asset for the state to, to, to have that organization here. So um, without any further ado, I'm going to go right into my presentation. Uh, you know, Moore Associates um, is, is pretty well known in the sector, but in case you don't know us, I mean, we're recovered paper market experts. Our brokers, we're consultants, so we're very independent. Uh, we're based in the U.S., we're based in Atlanta in the Southeast, uh, spent a lot of time in Florida, but we're global in practice. We, we have clients in Asia, clients in Europe, uh, and we do uh, market research and business analysis, lots of pricing analysis and uh, per selling optimization uh, and, and supply uh, development. Uh, so if it happens in paper recycling, we've probably done it. We've been in business 25 years. Uh, I've been in the industry 35 years, and uh, as we talked earlier at my, my table, I've been a Florida cave diver for 45 years, so <laughs> that even exceeds my recycling experience. So. You know, the macro issue in uh, the world's paper markets, and I'm going to talk globally, but I'm going to bring a lot of things down to the southeast of Florida. The macro issue is uh, overall we have very slow growth in the use of paper and paperboard uh, in the world. And if you look at this chart, if you look at this chart, the developed regions of the world are very flat and actually declining. Western Europe, North America are declining in the use of their paper and board. Now, the developing regions are still coming up, but you can see, like in this turn, and if you carry this out further, even the developed regions of the world are, are slowing their growth in, in the production of paper. And that's where it starts demand for recovered paper and the supply of paper to be recovered start with new paper. And if we look at the world's regions uh, 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 for recovered paper demand over a long period of time, you can see if you go back to 97, we were oh, about 130 million, these are metric tons. And fast forward, we're about 250, so pretty impressive growth. Uh, and a lot of it is, uh, as Ken talked about China in the gray, look at China's use uh, compared to the world. Now, if you look at North America, we've actually, uh, after some pretty heady times in the 80s and 90s, we flattened out and declining. It's about steady in North America. And pretty much the same in Western Europe, fairly steady. The only growth is uh, uh, in Japan, which was a big user, is, is down. Uh, other Far East and other areas of the world are, are where expansion and recovery paper use is happening. And if we look by grade of recovered paper, uh, where it's used, uh, container board, which is the box business, you can see that that's really where the growth is. Uh, making brown corrugated boxes out of OCC is a business that continues to click along pretty well. Uh, this blue line is other paper and board, and we can think of that as box board or cereal boxes, shoe boxes, uh, called carton board throughout the world. That's growing reasonably well. But the rest of the sectors are pretty flattened out. Newsprint declining, tissue just barely a little bit of growth, and p and is printing and writing papers, uh, again, pretty flat. And you can see these, if you put all these together, they don't all equal what's happening in the cardiac box business. I'm not gonna talk about this slide because Kent uh, covered it, but you can see how important China is to the whole deal to have every one of our speakers on Kamai is probably gonna talk about uh, China and the slowing growth. But I will talk specifically about uh, paper and paperboard production in China, and you can see the picture is almost even more dramatic than the GDP. After growing uh, over 10% or over 12% even for a decade, 
they fall off to an average of uh, just a little over 1% growth in paper. And that's absolutely affecting the recovered paper market throughout the world. And here's an interesting picture. Uh, Ken showed that slide of overall need of recovered paper, re uh, recovered commodities by China. And some of it is their slowdown, uh, but particularly in paper, and I suspect the other commodities too, it's increased domestic collection. They have more per capita income. They have more of these materials to be recovered. And you can see their collections have to be pretty slow growth for about seven or eight years have really picked up. And we expect that to continue. And if you look at imports, this was the uh, happy time, flattened out, and, and we think their import needs are gonna, gonna tail off slightly, primarily because, and, and this is imports from all over the world, primarily because they're increasing their own collection. And that's, that's standard. That, it's happened in Japan in the 70s and 80s, it happened in Taiwan, it happened in Korea. Um, is ever since global commodities were changed, uh, every country kind of goes through that cycle. They use other people's materials and then they increase their domestic collection. Now for the last several decades, recovered fiber, uh, recovered paper had a distinct cost advantage over virgin fiber, tree-based things, in the production of newsprint, what we call away from home tissue. Away from home tissue is commercial, institutional, restaurants, airplanes, what this facility uses as compared to facial. Um, and uh, recycled paperboard, those box board materials. Uh, but it never was really economical in the printing and writing paper grades and for high end packaging. But that's changing. Uh, and really, the only area where uh, recycled fiber has this distinct advantage is in container board and OCC. And that's why you see that explosion. Um, and, and there's two reasons for that. One is uh, the price trend line is higher commodity costs seen that in the last 18 to 24 months, but uh, we'll be back, and uh, if I give my uh, opinion on the, you know, the overall picture, I think uh, barring unforeseen events, which is a pretty big caveat, we will be going up from here. Uh, the problem is we always have unforeseen events, uh, but the, the, the things are ripe to, to move ahead. Uh, so then we'll be, we're coming back into higher commodity costs. But the other piece of it is lower quality of uh, what's being recycled. And some of it is just by the nature of every new ton of new material that you pull out of the waste stream is going to be more contaminated than the previous one. And then we've gone to some more mixed collection, which has lowered the quality. And that gives lower yields in the manufacturing sector and higher processing costs for them, let alone at the, at the MERV. Another big factor in the paper sector, and it's the same in aluminum, plastics, and, and steel, is uh, the moderate cost of virgin pulp. In the, in the tropical zones of the world, Brazil, Indonesia, uh, other South American countries, and other uh, Oceania, we're growing trees that have a seven year maturing cycle. Eucalyptus pulp, acacia pulp. Uh, we have all this short fiber, bleached white hardwood pulps out there that are coming on in million tons a year capacity. And they're chasing printing and writing paper demand in the world that is declining declining rapidly in, in the developed world like North America, but even in the developing regions of the world, printing and writing papers have pretty much gone flat. So uh, those pulps are going to be very reasonably priced and can be used in, in, in tissue for sure. The waste stream has, uh, has changed a lot uh, over the last uh, number of years. And this is consumption of North, Ameri uh, of North American recovered papers. And this is 93 and 2014. And you can see the total tons in metric tons again, not that different over that uh, 20 year period, but the makeup has gone from 46% OCC or 13 and a half million metric tons to 20 million tons. Again, the, that OCC factor. And it's mostly been at the expense of news. 21% uh, ONP use in 93, we're down to 7% here. And mixed paper on a, on a percentage of ton base is about the same. Uh, and high grades have, have gone down, the uh, office papers of the world have recovered. Now, the demand has changed, but luckily and, 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 and not incidentally, the supply has changed. I just saw a study of actually Florida cities uh, done over the last few years of what is the composition of recyclables. And we're now down to having only about 14% uh, ONP in our uh, uh, recyclables basket. And that's uh, 
about a third of what it was 20 years ago. People don't read newspapers, so it, it matches up with the demand. Um, the, the good news is we have more OCC in, the, in our residential recyclable stream. Direct to home internet sales have, have boomed, and it's giving us more of that, that commodity that's really needed. And we're about, these Florida cities, these 10 cities that we're studying, had about 15% OCC, triple what it was 15 years ago. The other piece of it is mixed paper is now the largest piece of the residential uh, recyclables bat paper basket uh, at about 25%. So paper is still pretty important. 54% of residential recyclables are paper. 25% is mixed paper. Uh, 20 years ago, that was about 2%. So a real increase in mixed. And, and mixed has got, got, got some real issues I'll talk about. The U.S. mills had a pretty good year in uh, 2015. Their consumption uh, was the most since 2010, up about 1% from 2014. And again, OCC, largest increase. And you can see the share, uh, uh, market share, not dissimilar to what that North American picture was. It's the dominant grade OCC. It's got the largest potential. Uh, but we have a high, fairly high recovery rate. The globe has a high recovery rate. We see shorter fibers, lower yields, and strength issues. So China's appetite is huge for this grade, and they, and they really do drive the market. And demand is soft, uh, and it has been for 18 months, but there are some good signs out there. Uh, actually, the market has ticked up in the last 45 days, uh, just like it has for Ferris, uh, and maybe even more so with the recovery paper grades, and particularly OCC and mixed. And we have a lot of new capacity actually coming out of North America to consume OCC. And it's primarily the conversion of uh, newsprint and printing and writing paper machines to container board. The uh, Dublin, Georgia, Southeast paper mill, which was a big buyer of OMP from Florida, is now mostly container board and, and brown grade. It doesn't only runs one newsprint machine uh, part of the time. And over the next five years, we, uh, as OCC hits the peak of its cycle, we'll probably see some substitution of, of even version pulse. But OCC prices are going to be the strongest uh, recovered paper grade, and it is the most economical uh, of the paper grades based on recycle to make boxes. Corrugated boxes have been around 125 years, and it's still a, a fine piece of uh, what we call secondary packaging. And, and here's a, a price chart, uh, average US prices. And you can see we were really peaked out and we were on the downhill slide. We had some really bad times uh, in early 15. We had a bump up, but then it came back down again. And if I was to carry this out uh, a little further, it, uh, it, it's come up uh, over the last uh, few months. In the southeast, uh, uh, prices were about 75 to 80 uh, for April. And again, that's uh, large quantities, high density bales, uh, FOB, the MERV for processor for shipment to, to the mills, which is uh, was flat between March and April. Um, so, uh, but it didn't go down, and it's it's up from uh, January. Mixed paper has me really concerned because we're making all this mixed paper, as I mentioned. Uh, Twenty-five percent of the residential recyclables uh, basket is now uh, mixed paper, and, and I, I really feel it has a lot of potential for oversupply. But I've been uh, I, I've been wrong on the pricing on this one. I'm still trying to figure out what's going on, and, and I think some of it's quality related. Um, while, while OCC softened over the last year, mixed paper kind of held its own. It's actually ticked up quite a bit. Um, mixed paper added uh, $10 in the Southeast uh, over the last month, and it's now trading at about uh, about $55, where OCC is uh, about 75 to 80. Um, it's got real issues with non-paper contaminants, fiber length, mixed fiber. It's, 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 it's the poorest grade out there. Uh, and we didn't used to make it on purpose, but now we, we clearly do, especially in the residential uh, area. And China's been a, a real big buyer of this grade, but we do have a large mill in uh, Georgia that consumes a lot of mixed paper and buys uh, a lot of it from uh, Florida. It is, it is still mostly an export grade, though. 65 to 70 percent of the mixed paper produced in the United States goes export. And uh, we have one large domestic user who has a mill in the Southeast US. And then actually, export prices of mixed and OCC have been moving up in the last 30 days. And export leads the market 
uh, domestic prices will follow. If we look at the pricing here uh, of OCC and get the US average, uh, since over the last 10, 11 years, we've been flat, but look at the gyrations. In the first half of 09 was a terrible time for mixed paper. We had movement issues. And then it slingshot back, and then we eroded a bit, and we've been coming back. And I, I think Kent's uh, message about recoveries uh, is, is a good one here. I don't think we're gonna see some slingshots like this. We're gonna see more of a trend back upwards uh, of slow recovery. You know, news and mixed paper have almost merged in terms of uh, pricing, and that's my next slide. So, but I look at this one about uh, the ratio of OCC to mixed paper prices, and uh, the, the two are related, and it really has bounced around quite a bit, but it's come down from the 60s, and I would expect that ratio to hang in the 55 to 60 range going forward. You know, the O&P supply situation, there's structural decline in the use of newsprint throughout the world, not just the United States. Uh, we, we, have, we have serious overcapacity still in North America, Europe, and even China. Um, and the business in the newsprint business is shutting down mills uh, fast enough. But it stays in balance because we shut down the newsprint mills and we have less OMP in the, the street. But Boxboard uses 20% news also, and that, that grade is growing worldwide. And we've got three graphic uh, machine conversions that are going on uh, to, uh, to corrugated based uh, container board, but none in the southeast right now. We had two, we had one in Louisiana and, and one in Georgia over the last few years, but the rest of them are uh, Midwest and, and Eastern Canada. Uh, price, quality, composition have all uh, kind of merged with, uh, with uh, mixed paper. The demand to make newsprint out of recycled fiber is uneconomical. That's one reason why uh, we see so little OMP used. Uh, it's not the same everywhere, and, and the shutdowns have been biased towards recycled in North America. And mechanical virgin pulp uh, on our continent is the way to go, but it's different in Europe because their electric prices are a lot higher. Recycled fiber is preferred because it uses a lot less uh, electric. The, uh, but the short supply, we have such a tight supply of, uh, of OMP that it'll keep the bottom prices up. And again, Kent uh, alluded to this. Uh, we kind of have uh, some supply, except for mixed paper, things are relatively tight uh, in the market. But even with mix showing this pricing increase, you got to think, I think the high quality mixed paper is in short supply. When you and low introduce quality the next supply. speaker, just before. I want to spend a lot of time on printing and writing papers because they're a small part of the residential stream, but uh, the, the one takeaway here is look at the tonnage being recovered. Peaked out in 06, and we're just using a lot less uh, printing and writing papers in the, in the U.S. Quality issues. Quality, quality, quality. Um, plastic film contamination, other plastic and metals and glass contamination are, are a serious issue in recovered paper. Uh, and it's partly due from mixed uh, collection, but it's also done from people putting the wrong things in the recycling bin. You guys are on the front lines. It's a constant battle. Uh, the good news is I think we really have come off the bottom. China's green fence sort of laid the gauntlet down, and I, I think there's a lot of initiatives to improve quality. You can't spend too much time communicating to your residents on what to put in the bin. It has just huge implications to the whole uh, Site. And uh, ISRI, through its PSI chapter, has actually so about it just issued a finalized yeah, yeah. new specification. So if you're not up on them, you need to because they really affect the uh, residential sector. Uh, in the uh, ISRI board meeting in Las Vegas earlier this month, uh, all three traditional OMP grades, number six, seven, and eight, were done away with, and they were replaced by uh, two grades, sorted clean newspapers which are primarily from drop-offs and uh, other highly source-separated uh, uh, sources is what the one new grade, and the other is sort of residential papers, which is kind of the mixed paper grade. Also, the three grades of mixed paper were done away with, and they redefined the, uh, a, a new mixed paper. So if you haven't seen those, go to isri.org or Google PSI isri, and you can get the new specs. Uh, It'll be a little bit of time before they become commonly used in the system, but they will. Yeah. You know, who's going to pay for higher quality? Well, you know, the MRFs and the paper stock guys are squeezed, the, the mills are squeezed. 
what's going on it is pushing costs back on the generator. That's that new business model that we heard in the last one. Uh, uh, will produce, so you're gonna pay more for recycling services, I have no doubt about that. And one way to offset that again is to improve the incoming quality to the MRF. Uh, extended producer responsibility, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on that because that's a whole presentation. That could be a, a, a source of new funding, uh, we'll see. And I thank you for your attention.